take notes. Welcome, Welcome to the State Farm Atlas Desk, where we have been taking notes all day long. That was a very back and forth game. By my account, the most competitive of the day so far. Yeah. Yep. And yep. frankly yeah. speaking, at 20, 25 minutes, that game could have gone either way. I honestly felt like the the Wildcats were getting control of the game. It felt like they'd found some good skirmishes, good fights, and they started to really deliver. And they just kind of, it was one big fight coming in on the other side that turned it the other way. Don't get too far ahead of yourself, Orgs. We'll get to that final fight. Okay, let's build it up. You talked about the skirmishes, you talked about the early game impact. Let's look at the fast pay Wildcats opening skirmishes. We have several replays. Orcs, talk me through this first one that comes in around 14 minutes in the game. Yeah, I think a lot of this was PSG overstepping, and then I think Ari was so critical in so many of these skirmishes. Getting the resets on the ultimate, I've been able to chase down in these extended fights. Yes, absolutely. When we were going through the draft in the back, we were talking about it. Like, Sin Zhao just fit this composition perfectly, and specifically Farfetch on his Nautilus was playing damn well. It felt like this team played like a unit, um, which you wanted to see throughout the tournament, and it finally happened at that portion of the game. I mean, it really did. At the end of the day, those fights were quite rough around the neck. It felt like yep. Rico stands up and made it clear. Everyone fights, nobody quits. It doesn't end there, though, oh, because no. every second counts. And thanks to the reliable Cisco network, the Wildcats found an amazing team fight in the mid lane with a perfectly timed Nautilus hook that looked like it had seven different angles. And I mean, Orcs, talk me through this play. Yeah, just flawless execution. Oh. We've seen Carrier do this. We've seen, seen Ming do this. You find those angles to connect on a critical target. And credit to Farfetch, he hasn't had the best tournament, but this game, this play, he delivered. Bento like Beckham straight through the minions. It was able to find the target. And it's just, it was beautiful to see. Uh, but for how close this game was, he does it again! again it's ridiculous. Aimbot, right? Hook off the hook off the hook. Every single second Farfetch for the early game was throwing them out. It had an influence. It doesn't end there because uh, the Wildcats, they kept strong. They kept up this pressure. Orcs for this next replay. I mean, at the end of the day, I felt like the Wildcats were screaming, come on, apes, do you want to live forever? Because they managed <laughs> to fight in the river and pick up the dragon. Yeah, and it felt like they were consistently finding out. We were really watching it and thinking, okay, Wildcats should be winning. This should be coming ahead. And it felt like they just had their opponent's number in these fights. This one in particular, I want you to hone in on the Ari, and it gets really up close and personal, but you get these constant resets coming out. He's able to do so much work in this mix. Yeah, it's crazy to see what he was able to do here. And I mean... <sighs> Saren domestically has just been so strong and you wanted to see this level in performance and we finally got to see that glimpse and I mean, it's type of Wildcats, you kind of have to respect their team fighting there, but it started to slip away. It them. did start to slip away. And just before we, we, we show the transition yeah. and how it is PSG managed to regain control, I do want to talk about some of the picks that appeared in this game. When we're sitting backstage, Dan just would not shut up about the champions. Yeah, so, wouldn't. okay, I'm going to give you some space. There's a few picks you want to talk about. Hit me with the stories. Okay, so first off, we talked a lot about the Nautilus, right? That has struggled so far at the tournament. Good ad adaptation we saw was Aftershock taken to be a bit bulky. And also, it was a Zonia's rush. Mate, mate, Aftershock, <laughs> Zonia's. Um, quick shout out, uh, Corporal, order. That's how you make uh, Nautilus tanky. Um, please, please continue. <laughs> yeah, well, it worked in the early game and definitely made a big difference when it got to those mid-game fights and be able to survive. Something else we saw was this gin, which, I mean, Raz talked about at the start of the day, and we started to see it deliver in those long-range pickoffs. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things where you could not touch him. He was in a, in, a, in a always in a pretty damn good position, and it made it difficult for, if you have the combination of that and the Ari, that when an engage starts, like, who are your targets, right? You could say the Nautilus, but as you mentioned, has the Aftershock. The fights would start out so good as they can burst down a member. So I just loved the draft for what it was. Speaking of untarget ability, Xin Zhao I thought was a great adaptation. I actually would have expected it to be banned in second phase, but it wasn't. They didn't respect it. Um, so pretty bad mistake there from PSG just because of how the early game went. But what I will say, for speaking of untarget ability, my mm -hmm. big point for PSG coming back was they had more Gwen's pit team, <laughs> right? That's, they the, had that's the most important stat. Enemy team didn't have a Gwen, and it literally, that champion is so unbelievably strong, and it just felt like in the later fights, Nobby, on fire. Okay, now talk about these later fights, because the team fight that led up to Baron is how PSG talent got back into the game. This was a crucial pick. It turned everything around, but I do want to ask, 
At that point, the game felt a little even. Maybe Wildcat's favorite, right? But Gold's Dragon relatively close. Break down this play for how PSU managed to push them out and take the Baron. So ultimately, the Baron starting that leaves them a little bit low on health and not wanting to commit too much to the fight. But then you have this massive Jin ultimate o opening up on such a wide area. And you have your dive threat. You have your Gwen who's able to chase down an extended play. And it just meant that they weren't going to be able to get away with every member surviving. And they lost too many. There was a clear signal for PSG to be able to take the Baron. And it's just one of those tragic examples that you see. Oh. My heart strings as you see the, the gold graph there of you have an exceptional early game and then you overreact which, to a pick that happens on the opposite side of the map and it turns into a bloodbath. But this is my point. If you look at that gold graph, yes. it's only a two and a half thousand gold lead after 20 minutes, yeah. right? Yes, it felt like Wildcats were in control. Yes, it felt like they were dictating the pace. But it's fair to say that PSG had more dragons. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, after the Baron, the only get, uh, good bug is a dead bug. That was what unlocked the win, okay? But up until that play, it, it wasn't exactly like, let's say, a guaranteed win for Wildcats. Yeah, and I think one of the problems is when you see Gwen, the counters we've typically seen have been things like Jace, because it shuts her down in the laning phase. Yeah. The Gragas is more of a neutralizer. And we saw it got to the point when the side lane, Hanabi even got a solo kill, and you could feel him ramping as the game went on. And that's the thing. The good teams in this tournament, when they are falling behind, trade on the opposite side of the map. And that's what PSG was able to do with Hanabi. So you need to see a little bit more of that. That's kind of a, a trait that now PSG has shown and what ultimately result, uh, resulted in that throw. I'm actually going to steal something that I know is coming up, but I want to say it now. Okay. For PSG Talent, when we started the tournament, they were the ones that were anticipated or expected to be the second seed, expected to go to Rumble. They then lose that game against the Red Canids. And I personally threw them out the window. Yep. I just drove over the bus. I'm like, that's it, they're done. It's now between TCL and CB Law, who's going to advance? I now have to go pick up the pieces, come back Bring and go. Bring them back, yes. Uh, I may have overreacted. But I think importantly, the expectations being reset and challenged, PSG are growing and they are getting better. And even in a game where ultimately they were a little bit behind, they were falling behind, they still found a way to come back. Yeah, I feel like they're, they're ramping. And it's kind of similar to what we've said about RNG and T1, where you know the game wasn't going super favorably in the early game, but you felt that mounting pressure. And I think PSG, not exactly the fastest team in all the games, but they know how to close them out. Yeah, and I mean, we just need to see more of this. This is the type of PSG we expected. Yeah. We talk about historically in MSIs where they just ramp up throughout the tournament, and it's happening here. Now, the reason that I stole that line, it was something that's coming up. I do want to talk about the groups in general. And just before we pull up the standings, I'm huge shout out to Reddit for this one. Gala's Pentakill has been retconned, and it's no longer canon. <laughs> and that is because when it's we true. bring up the group standings, of course, RNG with that reset, they now have one win under their belt. And I cannot believe the TCL, PCS, and CB LOL are standing above them in the standings, right? Oh, I think the losses actually put them below. Damn it! My oh, joke your plate is ruined. So I mentioned, I mentioned PSG Talent's um, expectations are reset. I do want to highlight that out of the remaining scenarios of all the games and results, in 89% of remaining scenarios, PSG lock the Rumble stage. With only one win and one game officially played, RNG have 54% likelihood to advance, a percentage of scenarios where they can advance. Damn it, I messed that up myself. And importantly for Red Canids and now the Wildcats, that is now dropping. 25% of scenarios, 3% of scenarios. That race for second, it is a little more heavily favored to PSG talent. Press. Yeah, and I mean, for me, it's a heartbreak because if you look at that last game, you, when you get those leads, you cannot afford to lose them as a team that has gone through all those scrims, that have now had that second chance going up against RNG, you want to be able to take notes and learn throughout the tournament. And it felt like they were there. It take felt like, notes! Take notes! <laughs> it felt like they were there, and they just made that one crucial mistake, a demoralizing one. I mean, the Canids are setting up on stage. You can see them right now. And I think Dagton and Ashim were just talking about it because of the fact that PSG Talent came back, picked up that win against Wildcats. Percentage of scenarios where Wildcats advance is down to 3%. Percent of Ooh, scenarios. You hate to see so it. So there's a chance, is what I'm saying. But more crucially, it will mean that for the Canids and the Wildcats, they are almost looking for, they almost need an upset surprise win over RNG to get closer in scoreline with PSG talent. Yeah, it'd make all the difference and it's a hard sell, but it opens up that possibility for the teams. And I think Red Canids. I feel like this is a team where the concepts are there, the thought process, they can match RNG in that regard, but the execution, the execution's where it's needed work. And I hope when they go back into the green room and just like look back at their w wins and losses, focus on the good, right? Yep. Right back at the beginning when they had the objective control around Rift Herald, when JoJo was going topside, yeah. oftentimes, those are the things that you have to go back on that and focus on rather than the negatives.
That'll work on Bin. If you go top, true. If you go top, <laughs> he will die to exactly. that one hundred percent. Bin's number one hater, ladies and <laughs> gentlemen, and everybody else. It is time to send it to the casters, Mark and Pastry. Welcome to the show. Please take it away. Thank you very much. We're back, Mark. Uh, we are. Different teams than the ones we've, uh, we've been seeing earlier in the week, but still very excited to be yeah, here. Yeah, I'm excited to cast some other teams. Been yeah. stuck in the uh, NA Group C situation for a little too long uh -huh, now. Uh -huh. uh, excited to branch out. And uh, especially for only seeing the second game for RNG here. I know. Uh, are these jokes going to get old? No. Twitch chat? Um, maybe at the end of the day, but we have three more games to <laughs> really <laughs> kill them. No, 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 no. <laughs> the thing, too, is there's also the games are getting pushed. I don't know if it's official exactly which day the other games are going to be made up but on They yet, will be played, obviously. There are more days to continue <laughs> making this joke. That's true. That's true. We have plenty of games left to go uh, in this matchup. Though, it's funny, actually, seeing those percentages. Uh, obviously, based on the number of games played, RNG are less likely to make it out of the group right now based on their scoreline than PSG, who have actually had quite a resurgence. But neither of that team, obviously, isn't here. Here, RNG still looking to do the same thing, right? The expectation was they were going to go undefeated. That's still the expectation at this point, even though they do have to replay some of their games. They're going to go 9-0 technically, yeah. you know, or not technically, but figured, I guess it is. I mean, they're going to play nine games, and there is a chance they win all of them. It's just were some scrims on stage that we yes. all watched, is what we'll call those. They were those really fun three. scrims, I will say. They were some great scrims, and they looked good in them. I think for RNG, uh, this is a situation where... They are, you know, getting scrappy in some of the games, but they're obviously trying things. They're having fun. They're also still exerting their dominance. <laughs> they look incredible yep. as they do it. So not at all concerned for this team. You heard them talking about Bin, the, the scrappiness, what's going to work, what doesn't work. Uh, I'm just hoping to see some more aggressiveness out of them. That's all we ever really want. Yeah, and on the red side, obviously, uh, did look pretty good in their opening day, have looked a little shakier, and especially as PSG have kind of risen up through this group, obviously, uh, it's going to be harder for the other two teams, Red and Istanbul Wildcats. But there is always a shot, right? I think in general, when you're in this position right now, you are going to have to steal a game off one of the tournament favorites here, uh, either one or two, depending on who you want to talk to. But definitely RNG are in the conversation for, we expect them to see them at least in finals. So it is a very tough ask, but obviously Red has a chance here. And I think... In general, teams power up throughout a tournament. Okay, so I thought I was going crazy for a minute. But I was on the websites trying to like look up the stats uh -huh. for the other game. Uh -huh. They've already started pulling them down. So there's only like oh, no. five <laughs> games. So I was like, what happened last time, you know, RNG played red? Because I remember like, oh, I think it was kind of scrappy. And I was trying to like, look up who played well and whatnot. And I'm like, wait a minute. all It's like just pulled off all the sites. It's gone. Just didn't exist. The stats have been removed. We have actually retconned Gullah's Pentakill. That's what happened. I mean, that's what Trevor said, so it's back yeah. on the table. Anyone want their first Pentakill MSI? You hey, can grab it. Go get go. it. All right. Well, obviously, uh, I think we will. Curious to see how that all shakes out in the bot lane. But for now, we'll be into draft and see uh, how RNG want to approach their second game of the tournament. <laughs> Fresh face. That's, that's, that's my last one. Not... <laughs> that's my last one. Okay, okay. All right, Camille, all right, nothing too surprising to kick things off. I don't think we've seen huge sweeping like changes as far as how they seem to draft. I think a lot of the metagame is still suddenly being figured out. I think some things are a little bit more solidified. I think Ari was coming in, already a big champion, has mostly been banned or has been picked, and I think she's won every game. No, maybe she she did actually lose last game. Yeah. So she's finally picked up a loss. She finally picked up a loss, but she has been one of the most uh, powerful champions in mid lane. Just so strong throughout the lane phase, the safety that you get being able to heal up. She's a generalist pick that can do everything. You can shove the wave, you can roam, you're safe, you can sustain. Uh, and then you can also go make your own plays with your charms and Everfrost that you build. Uh, it just gives the best players every kind of tool you need to exert your will over the game, which is why when Ari is strong, uh, the best players always pop off on her. Where sometimes, you know, it's like a great player playing, I don't know, Orianna. Sometimes a little harder to, to shine unless you get a fatty shockwave. Yep. Wukong also banned, kind of being one of the other big picks alongside Lucian. RNG really just saying, all right, we'll take the big picks out of the tournament. We're confident playing against whatever you uh, want to bring at us. So Ezreal and, curiously, Volibear banned away from Wei. But Gwen is going to continue to have very high priority when she's open. Yep, Gwen is an insane top lane pick right now. She has been able to snowball a very strong lane phase. And with the, the cooldown refresh change to be a little bit shorter, so you get your E back up faster, we've seen people actually outplay a lot of early gank attempts, which is when people are trying to punish her before she gets her ultimate and stuff like that. But then even without Flash, able to survive through these, uh, Impact had a couple of good ones. I think we've seen a number of players just pop off on this champion. Absolutely. 
As uh, looks like Kaiser is starting to the Nautilus maybe Ooh. become the pick du jour. There is the Nautilus though. Okay, so Ming's Nautilus Pretty is good. insane. People have been hyping it up, and so far this tournament, I have a little monologue about. I'm ready, Nautilus. If you'll indulge me, I'll indulge you. So, <laughs> Nautilus has uh, the worst win, win rate in the tournament. Cyber yes. champions have been picked once and like lost. It's not just that though. He's one in seven in the next most losses by a champion is four. So he's got almost <laughs> twice as many losses thus far as champions have been picked this much. I was going through that match history because I had this theory that it's a bit of a chicken or the egg. Like, is Nautilus a bad champ or is he being higher prioritized by the lower seeded seams and thus more likely to lose anyways? Right. And when you look at the match history, it is, again, mostly the pool one, pool, or excuse me, pool three, pool four seeds playing him. But at the same time, you then wonder, why aren't the top teams playing him? Yeah. <laughs> so that was a bit of the chicken of the air I was going through. I was like, okay, so the losses are coming because maybe just the worst teams are playing him, but then also the good teams aren't playing him for a reason, most likely. But now that Ming's picked it, maybe we're back on the Nautilus's fine train. Maybe. Now, uh, Leona also very popular alongside Viego there as Red take two more picks. And then, curiously, Jax is back. We've seen this once already in this tournament. Seems to be a somewhat popular option in Gwen. Obviously, there aren't very many good options into Gwen. It's pretty tough to to really affect her laning phase. And then obviously, once she gets items, she's kind of golden. So we'll see how RNG want to attack the top lane. Yeah, they're setting up some understandable situations here with topside split push. The Kaisa Nautilus is just a strong lane in general. Yeah. It's often the pairing that you go for. And with the lack of jungle bans here, you can see where you're maybe going with the kind of J4 and Galio combinations that you sometimes see for these kind of snowballing topside and allowing Kaisa to dive into backline. Um, there's a lot more focus on marksman bands, given that that is a mismatch role right now for RNG. And Titan as well being one of the best players on red this tournament and probably all year, you could argue. Yep. Uh, he, he's been incredible. And so they're trying to remove some of the early game aggressive picks in particular that can snowball against the Kaisa, both the Ballista and Draven, now they're just hovering. Gal is having some fun. Gal is taunting him. Yeah. I mean, with the Ezreal ban too, I don't hate it. Obviously, Gal is very good on that champion, but he's also one of Chitan's best champions. So, uh, definitely been pushed pretty far down. We'll see what he wants to go for as way after all of Gal's trolling gets Lee in. Yep. All that trolling gets Lee. I do appreciate the Galio ban since I was just hyping up, like, it's a pretty good Galio angle, like, kind of telegraph. So, uh, Red also picking up that angle, getting rid of that. And I think that makes Gala, or excuse me, Way want a more. Uh, individual champion playing less for the team right now, get across the map and just start scrapping as opposed to going for this kind of big team fight wombo combo. Press R, engage comp. Yeah, obviously Xiaohu's gonna get counter pick here. We'll see how he wants to tie the room together. But still two more picks to come here for Red. Need a bot laner for Titan. It is Jin, which has been a surprisingly popular pick this tournament. I think Umbral Glaive has uh, something to do with that, but I think Jin's also just decent. Yeah, I think with the Marksman nerfs that push the Jinx and Aphelios yeah. down the tier list a little bit, you also have the Umbral Glaive changes. It's made Jin a bit more attractive of an option. You still need to make sure you're pairing him with enough damage that he's mostly follow-up. I mean, when Jin gets ahead with the lethality and stuff, he can absolutely obliterate squishies on the enemy team, but there's some situations where you're not ahead or the enemy has some front line, you're going to rely on the rest of your team. And for the most part, Red does have a fair amount of damage, especially with Vex now locked in as well. Uh, a lot of dive tools. Four out of five are going in. Jin sitting on the back line, hopefully yep. safe. We've seen the number of times where dive comps <laughs> abandon their marksmen mm -hmm. to be uh, assassinated by the enemy team's dive comp. Yep. And I, I'm really curious what Jahu's going to go. The TF makes a lot of sense with the Galio band out, wanting to go for this more global game plan that you kind of identified as soon as the Jax was locked in with the Kai'Sa. This is the next best option available. Yeah, definitely. Feeling like the uh, the red side lanes are gonna get attacked. I think in particular, definitely eyes towards that Gwen. We've talked about it, right? She's so powerful. RNG knew what they were giving away when they didn't ban her, right? It was kind of an easy first pick up for red. And so they've just decided to draft in a way that they can pretty continuously attack this Gwen if RNG get the expected foothold into this game. Yeah, uh, I mean, this is obviously gonna be eyes on top lane for scrapping, but I also low-key just want to watch the Ming Nautilus. Like, oh, of course. Given that uh, very likely RNG wins this game, I believe Red will almost be 100% knocked out at that point um, If with a loss here. I have to double check that. You're looking at the wrong human. I'm just going to start saying tiebreaker facts. Oh, if nice. they're wrong, they're wrong. Yes. I'm just going to misinform 100,000 people. No big <laughs> deal. <laughs> Love that for you. 
Uh, no, but I, I think um, RNG in this game are, are obviously heavy favorites. I yeah. know there's been a lot of memes about the, <laughs> the whole the games being taken away, what number it is, but they, they've been so good. But I do think there's been windows where people have made plays against them. There's been times where, especially in the early game, a lot of the pool one seeds have had some oopsies yep. where teams legitimately either make a nice gank happen or they get an outplay. And it, it's actually more like the 10 to 20 minute mark where I think you see the dominance of the pool one seeds come in when they start having team fights around Rift Heralds and Dragons and how they play Vision and Setup and all that stuff is actually what elevates them a lot more than just like straight up laning dunking, though that does <laughs> happen. It does happen sometimes. It does happen. I mean, RNG are not the early game team, right? We think about a lot of LPL teams. Very good in the early stages, not bad by any means, especially if they do outclass their opponents by any significant margins. But in the LPL, RNG were not known for that, and Red are off to the races, five stacking through the enemy river. All right, they have a lot of ways over the wall. They might try and get into the pit and then over with a Leona E if they can force Bin through that choke point. Uh, it looks like they're not actually going to go for that one. Dilling this next section of invade a little bit more. Way's going to spot out Aegis, and I believe that's going to spot everyone else. So RNG, gonna leave. we're on the heads up though. They've already got their own ward on the red pit leaked out there. Grabbed that one. Nice and easy for Ming. Just ran in there and dropped it. And then actually was able to get back in time for the sweeper, which means you can find some more Ming setups for scored. Wei. Uh, Wei does know, of course, that that red was warded out. So maybe that in combined with Ming having a sweeper might lead to an earlier gank for bot lane. We can see if he does any cheese. Certainly will have some help down there. Double Glacial Augment. We've seen a lot of Leona and Nautilus hanging out, and there is kind of a debate on which so one funny. you want to grab. <laughs> also about uh, Rune Choice. Yes. Ox, in the in the previous analyst test, I mean, was talking about the swap for Farfetch over to the Aftershock. And I think there is a good case to make for that, especially if you are struggling a little bit to find something a little Your death more. Prone. Yeah, and it's it's a more selfish rune that's going to keep you alive. There were a couple times in fights where it was actually pretty close and Farfetch was kept alive, but for a player like Ming, who I assume knows the limits of Nautilus well enough that you can go for the greedier rune of the Glacial Augment. Whereas, of course, Leona a bit more naturally tanky. So we'll see how they do in the 2v2. Mid lane should be a lot of farm trading. It's going to be more about Shahu affecting those side lanes. Has the spellbook, has the TP as the base spell just needs to avoid any sort of growth that all in. And then this matchup's a fun one. Yeah, the 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 Jax there proccing the E. Guigo jumping back with his own, actually not being able to get the reset during the stun window. Slight misplay, I think, a little bit. You don't want to use your E and then still get stunned and then not get the cooldown on, on your E snip. So uh, you really need to, I think, you just Hide it out and then take the E back in for maybe a better trade. I don't know. It did not look clean right there, getting no. bullied a little bit level one. Yeah, level one. Uh, now it looks okay, obviously, as uh, Gwen's picking up a bit more farm, but Bin was literally 12 0 in farm. Had complete yeah. control of the early wave, was getting it pushed in, had the, held the level two versus one advantage for a while, and obviously the lane's going to even out now, but Bin navigating level one very nicely as Zahu is going to take a nice bit of burst there from Grevthar's skill shots. Oh, not bad by Grevthar. I know people have been. Very critical of some of the players uh, struggling this Shocking. tournament. Farfetch has been been getting a lot of attention. Um, I think even for RNG of the players, the early game that you're talking about that can be a little sus Dicey. suspect for them. Yep. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of the times it's Way who people are looking at his playmaking, his volley bear in a game that no longer counts was uh, very criticized. Uh, no longer have to worry about that. A couple early deaths, and I think. I know people, it's a debate when you're playing these kinds of games, how clean should you really be? They tend to go for riskier plays because they're sure they'll be able to come back even if it doesn't work. So I, I'm usually not too critical at, at this point in, in the tournaments. No, I'm here for the fun, that's for sure. As a uh, trying to land it up here in the 1v1, but it is a bait here for the Lee. Aegis going to get spotted as well. Good patience here by Wei. Is, the, is it counter counter gank time? I think it is. Wei's just going to chill. Might end up too far away from this play, though, unless they make a dive happen. Now he's leaving again. Yeah, just has no idea. Oh, <laughs> sneeze. Oh, we, all right. Wait, so Wei might wait for the recall to finish and then go for the Gwen. Yep. And yep, that's the play. So now Gwen's roaming in, trying to find the jungler. But the jungler is already behind him. And he's going to have to clean gonna, out the wave, is though. Is he going to recall? Oh, here he goes. No, he's going. They're all going to make him play a very long setup here for the game, but they're trying to make it happen. 2v1. Gwen, no flash, no hope, and first blood over to the Lee Sin. The, <laughs> the just slow play by Way. They're sitting in the brush. I would have to go back and check exactly how long that was. That's like 45 seconds to a minute. And as much of a joke as that sounds, like this is one of the things 
at international tournaments that always throws other teams for a loop is how long the Chinese junglers are willing to brush camp. Like the biggest culprit of this back in the day was MLXG, who would just sit in the brush all day become MLXD until he finally finds this like one Lee Sin kick. And I, I do think it's something that sometimes people aren't ready for. Flash E in, Ming gonna flash out of the way. Gala in trouble potentially, but Nautilus is the target they want. Again, pretty squishy, ignites down TP. He's gonna cover Chitam though! Jumping on in, flashes forward for the auto. And that's a kill there in the gank for Red. Chitan and Jojo popping off in the bot lane and even Ming is not safe oh, from no! defeating Nautilus. Oh boy. Champ issue. <laughs> All right, well, you know what? It's only one. First one's the first one you get a pass. See how it happened uh, through the rest of the game as Bin starting to really dominate this 1v1 potentially. Gwen Liu going back to Not six just yet, tries to trade back, but Bin definitely winning that exchange. Yeah, it's going to get a lot worse at six. Uh, Bin will then have his passive from that proccing as well. So here we'll see the setup. Just Leona into Nautilus is in general a good matchup, and though he does kind of buffer the hook there. The root follow-up from the Jin, that utility that we're talking about, able to get the extra stun from Jojo. Last second, Jitan, nice flash forward for the fourth shot. Yep. Just well comboed together. Uh, Ming did what he could, but that is one of the instances where you look at Aftershock and go, yep, you probably lived there. Because Absolutely. he got the buffered hook onto the uh, Leona E, which is, one, nice hands. Yep. But two, uh, was when your Aftershock would have proc and kept you alive. A right, plate here for Bim. Does have flash, but he's going to have to wiggle his way out of this 2v, 3v1, actually. Great flash. Get out from under the first as Jojo roams up, and that fear lands, but Bin's far enough away that that gank will not happen. Actually, a really important gank there for Red. The top lane was not going well. The first blood, the fact that you have the <laughs> just advantage of the matchup going in his favor. Being able to force the flash out does limit how aggressively Bin can play that lane because you no longer have the flash to escape if you just perma the brain off split pushing. So that will give a brief window for Guigo to start farming up, even out the lane. As oh, God. that's absolutely filthy! out of Ming. How did he know? Chitan was trying to play back. Like, look at where he is versus where the five plate tower is. Like, he knows what's happening. He's trying to be smart. You send multiple resources up to the top side. I'm not safe in the bot lane. I'll run through my jungle to try and maybe hold mid or something. And RNG just had the read on the play. He's camping in the brush. Find him out. My goodness, man. RNG, the heat seeker. Onto the port, Red can it's Jin as RNG are gonna take the dragon off the map as well before the eight minute mark, so no Rift Herald to worry about trading. This one, this is a little bit of extra off the back of that very nice play in the enemy jungle. Yes, that is uh, gonna be the first Drake in their favor. It's a good one to steal away as well, given the fact that I don't think they naturally really wanted to play towards bot side with this TF. A lot of this resources are gonna be able to go top, and normally when you do that, the trade is Red will be grabbing the dragons, and then we have to worry about stacking the dragons, and eventually we'll have to fight those, but you slow down Red's stacking option, so it allows you to play the map a little bit longer into the game. I wonder how close Ming is to six, because Gala is six right now. Actually, Ming like threw out a hook, kind of close to the enemy tower, because I think Gala is confident in some sort of 2v2 dive right now, because of course, Kaisa does have six to dive in, but they push the wave in, they're gonna back away from the play, and Chitan should be fine, as Ming and Gala are at least gonna clear out some vision. Aegis is here, but uh, RNG aren't gonna play too aggressively here. Just get their vision and get out. Yeah, and I think uh, for the most part, RNG probably has an idea. They have a decent vision set up. They have that pink war from when they picked Chitan in the jungle earlier, and even if they didn't spot out Aegis directly, they at least can uh, try to read his jungle path. I'm sure they're aware of roughly what camps are up. Also aware of this Herald that they want to play for here. Already roaming everyone up. Very nice setup onto Grefftar, potentially. Stun's going to land. No follow-up there. Wade tries to jump on over, but can't quite land the resonating strike. Tahu's going to eat the honey fruit, and Gwen's going to spot everyone else. Yeah, we have the ball lane from Red coming up as well to actually contest this Rift Herald. We will get spotted out. We're looking like we're heading for a 5v5 over the Rift here, which is not what I would have expected. Ooh, Gala just calm. running into the enemy. No vision. But it doesn't get a... Uh, Snapped up there by Chitan's root, so he's gonna be okay. Gala goes back to bot now, and I think RNG have decided that they just wanna buy some time here. Bin's still fine in the 1v1, although he took a little bit of damage in that last trade. Yeah, with that gank and how the wave was when it happened, it's actually given Guigo the CS advantage will be even higher once he's able to clean up a bunch of these. Uh, not a bad spot to be in given the initial kill that went against him. TP in, back to mid lane though for Grefta. Way is again. Just chilling in this brush, but uh, he just probably suspects that something's up here, so is in the area. We'll see if uh, 2v2 eventuates. Also, Jiaohu leaning towards that half of the map as well. I think it's also respecting the fact that there's no flash on Bin, and so that is probably where Red's gonna make a play. And again, 
Aegis is going to walk right through Wei, potentially, but too many other members of RNG around, too many people missing on the map as well. I think Red kind of sniffed that one out, knew that there was something up there and did not actually get baited into making a play onto Bin as he was extended in the lane. Yeah, maybe made it look a little too obvious, but nice response regardless. Still, RNG do clear out the vision that was had. There was a controller there that Ming just picked up. Ming's continue to stay nice and proactive here as Red now are going to counterplay, maybe expecting RNG to take a reset off of that play and maybe take this Herald for themselves. They're going to get the vision. They're going to start the objective in RNG. I think they might have found the timer. Red, very yeah. nice little window no, here. I actually think this is really both... I think this is good for both teams. It shows that RNG respects Red enough to not do what their comp shouldn't be doing. Like, RNG arguably could have just started a Rift Herald and forced a 5v5, then like, yo, we're going to outhand you. But I think they respected the fact that, you know, Red's not a joke. If you just go into a 5v5 in this situation against the Vex with this kind of like dive comp that they have, you might get obliterated. And so when Red started moving up to test the Rift Herald, RNG actually said, you are good enough that we are not going to just brute force this play. We're going to go back to our lane, start farming up again, because we are really more about playing the map. And uh, that gives Red the, the window off that reset uh, to, to go ahead and grab that without really losing too much. I mean, Gala going back a little bit earlier than Chakan gave him that opportunity to start getting a little bit ahead in CS, as well as some of the other windows where Chitan has been forced off the ball lane. Yep, nice. Uh, gold efficient, Umbo Glaive already done for Chitan, but Gala feeling good about the gold overall. Gonna grab a plate here as well and not get too greedy as there's expecting some presence. In fact, there's four people down here. Drifter ready with the ulti. Not gonna fire it away into the brush though, so Gala is gonna get away safely. This is a small advantage for RNG. It is a 2,000 gold lead. Part of that is just gonna be the raw CS, as you saw with Gala having a lead, Xiaohu having a lead, non-negligible. Even Wei is up, despite that kind of brush camp that we were memeing about. He he is actually in a good spot, as well as the just natural gold generation of TF, the extra kill, and we get a pause. All right, well, have a pause, as is evident by the current screen. We have no updates yet, but when we get them, we'll relay them to you, I, don't you I, worry. I doubt this will be anywhere as interesting yeah. as the uh, Leona going to space. That was maybe the greatest <laughs> astronaut Vulcan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gonna be tough to top that one. I, I'm, th there's nothing happening on the map either. Yeah. So most likely this is a uh, maybe some sort of for for RNG. Maybe there's some ping related thing. I know that's a big <laughs> topic right mm -hmm. now. Uh, there's also the refs talking to the red canids. So maybe on their end, sometimes something feels a little jittery. Your mouse stops working. You can have a little. Mouse dies, yep. headset stops working. Well, we'll see. We'll get an update. But it does. it's not an in-game related bug, I would reckon, given that nothing is really happening. Yeah, we're not mid Ari Dash, yeah. which was what happened last time. And then we found out that Vulcan went on a bit of an adventure. Yeah. And then I, came back to see his people. As much as uh, I think viewers are often disappointed when a pause happens, kind of ru ruins the momentum and all that stuff, it's something that the broadcast team also feels. I know we don't talk about it very much, but pauses are, we don't love them. No. Uh, it's very rare that you come out of a pause with a highlight like the, the Vulcan one. Most of the time, it's, uh, you know, someone spilled water. Yep. Caps the classic. You yep. Know, that, that was another one we got earlier in the tournament. Water versus pro players is a, a difficult matchup. It's 10-0 in it's, favor of the it, water bottle. Really, really? So, sure. you know, I said 70-30. Oh, okay, know, like, it's not that it's bad. A little, little more generous. Okay, okay. I've seen pro players drink water successfully before. I know it's a doable <laughs> matchup. <laughs> Hard to navigate. Mechanics are a little bit Skill advanced. Issue, yeah. yeah. But... You know, players players get better over time, right? It's, one, it's been the long. meta. The meta evolves. Yeah. <laughs> Ten years of League of Legends. O open open lids to sippy cups. Yes. Soon there's gonna be hamster cages like beer hats <laughs> on. You know, with a little funnel going in. A little camelback or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Can't spill that. You know what? Actually, you could maybe attach like a little water thing to like a headset. Well, that's what I was thinking, you know. Oh, like, yeah, with, yeah. With the, the, I like that. Oh. I, I don't know if those exist elsewhere in the world or if that's just an American thing. But yeah. you have, like, the beer hard hats. Yes. Yeah, and that's it's what I was imagining, but with a headset and then cans of uh, water on the side. All right, we're back well, in. Water one, Red Bull in the other. Yeah, there yeah, you go. Be good. I'm here for it. All right, back in we go. Wayne and JoJo squaring off. There is a dragon up in 30 seconds that the teams may want to scrap for. Red are in the area to try and contest it, looking for some sort of fight. That was a very, whenever you come out of a pause, I feel like everyone brain blanks for a moment. Yeah. And so off of a reset is actually sometimes more dangerous than just being in lane uh, because you're like, oh yeah, I was, I was going to river, right. And then yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah. wait, where was the enemy? When was the last time I saw anyone? Yeah. Versus if they're just standing across from you, you're like mentally prepared, like Leon might flash me, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So uh, that was, that was a, a little dicey there for RNG actually, but they 
got out of the, that river situation, and I mean, now they've gotten their own control back. Can't talk, right? You gotta remember the plan. You know, if you were mid plan when that was happening, all of a sudden you just gotta retain it in your mind. But looks like everyone is uh, righted the ship. It would have been an interesting play for ONG to try and fight, although they are going to the dragon, have enough control. I say that because uh, there's a TP mismatch there in the top side, but Red instead are gonna just drop the Herald top lane and try and get some pressure and some gold into this Gwen. Don't mind this <laughs> play at all. Basically a trade, knowing that they can't really fight for this bottom lane control they don't have. Yeah, I mean, this is a really interesting game. It's kind of the inverse of what I would have expected looking at the drafts coming in. You think the TF's going to go topside a bunch. You think they're going to get the Rift Herald if they can while sacking dragons to, to snowball the jacks. And oh. here, hold on, here we go. Wait a second, Chow. Who's going to make an appearance? Does see Greftar as well. The now to be defensive. Has the gold card ready. But very nice coverage there from Greftar. Going to get stunned, but no follow-up. During this time, though, the Dragon was still taken. That still is actually the weak side of the map for RNG, even though Jahu ports up there. Grethar being on the roam, that was actually a coverage TP by Jahu, knowing that, hey, the mid laner is missing. He's definitely not going bot lane as we take Dragon. So him teleporting up there, and it was a very defensive teleport, maybe more than people were expecting, but it was just to make sure the dive didn't happen. Because on the flip side of the map, we just grabbed Dragon. Gal is going to get a turret by himself, just getting yeah. absolutely funneled a ton of gold right now. And so while coming in, I was like, Bin's going to carry this game. It's going to be a crazy match with the top side. It's actually been the inverse for now. They're stacking dragons and, and have an extremely strong marksman. And Bin might carry the game. He doesn't need to right now. He's chilling, getting CS, has to contain the Gwen. Ming's up here in the top side, maybe help out. And it's uh -oh. going to be a dive. Level six Nautilus, there's the ulti. Gwen is immune, of course. But how else can they navigate? In fact, they cannot just sneak night. And the tower's doing a little bit too much. Ming, though, max range, finds the hook, and they will grab the kill between two turrets. Gonna back off there. I think maybe Wigo should have stayed underneath the turret because it was still lack leashed, I think, onto Ming right there. Ends up going down. Uh, does outplay it a little bit with the immune. The ultimate, not able to survive though. There were no TPs up to help cover that play. Red's doing what they can though, pushing down the bot side, splitting the map right now. Trying to grab that turret to equal it out. But top side is in RNG's control. And Finn now is finally able to go like, okay, I played defensively long enough, team. Give me some turrets, give me some ganks, let's get this going. Yeah, real nice presence there from Ming, even with Nautilus ulting getting canceled, which is not easy. There aren't very many abilities that will do that. But Gwen Mist is one way as Gala and Xiaohu continuing their pressure way. Also with the wraparound, flash, hop, kick, kill, oh. Xiaohu picks it up. And now Jojo back in there, gets the ulti down, beautifully timed stasis though. And Gala's gonna turn it over around. Here's Ming though, finds a hook, but Aegis is diving on through Jahu with another beautifully defensive card. But Gwen's trying to make it happen. Needleworks run out, but oh. Grafton missing the ulti and RNG. They're gonna get away with everything here. And now Wei, are you going back in? You find the Q, you got the damage. Gala actually on the side, picks up the enemy jungler, and RNG finds two kills there. RNG just out team fighting Red there. The initial kill was super clean. Shatan instantly blown up, but then there was a moment where Red, if they were able to land just a couple more abilities, probably could have turned that fight. If Grevthar landed that ultimate to go flying in with the massive fear, could have turned it. This initial kick was just too clean. Gold card already primed, Wei, Flash, Ward hop kick back, insta get like an excessive amount of CC. You could argue the the uh, Everfrost not maybe needed by Jahu. Nice stopwatch to survive, but a well time. Or maybe that was a Leona stun actually. Maybe with not Aegis' stun. But with him getting so low, Guigo also getting a lot of damage out of the Gala. If this landed onto either of them, the double fear back would have made this an easy 3 for 0 before Wei could get back involved in the fight. Not able to land that means that it opens up oh. Aegis to get flashed on top of by Gala. Nice window to get on top of him there. Gala's bloodthirsty. Yep, self, uh, self scry as, uh, as well. Just uh, put the blue trigger down, sees in there, insta flash over. Nice and clean there from Gala. That's the uh, the killer instinct you love to see. Didn't even need the LT there as Ming once again has found a hook. Uh -oh. Back we go for Jojo. Tower's dead in mid though, so Jojo's gonna evaporate. Leona not tanky enough. Bin's gonna find two kills. Shahu's gonna cut him off at the pass. And there's the ever frost of all two ages. Gala's got a double. Gala's got a triple. Just too clean right now for RNG. Wants two more, not gonna find him in this fight. Still hunting for his first pentakill uh -oh. of the tournament. Jitan getting a little low. No ulti though for Kaisa. Yeah, he's... Ming's gonna keep hunting though. Ming's like, hello, I know where you are. And uh, he's gonna try and make it happen. Jitan flashes away, wants the kill, he's gonna get it, but dies in the end. He'll call worth. He'll call worth. He's trying to sink that Nautilus KDA. We have to keep <laughs> the meme going. That Nautilus is a feeder champ. Ming's kind of ruining that narrative right now as he's only died twice, and that one was, again, one of those times. Deaths don't tell the whole story there. 
clearly he knew that he was in trouble, but he had the stopwatch. He actually played it very well. He made not have to give his life up to find that kill. Here's one of those times where the Leona mechanic about going to the back target is not great. Did not mean, yeah. I don't think, to land on Xiaohu. I think he just wanted to get Ning there. And so ends up in the middle of the entire team of RNG. Once he's dead, that's like the main front line for your team here. It's an easy chase down for the re-engage with Xiaohu. TPing to split that team up. Jutan never able to really get involved with the fight. Same with Guigo. And from there, it's, it's pretty easy. I, I kind of respect Chitan as well, hoping to find Ming, not looking for, like, it's like, they're both looking for each other, like, because otherwise he could have gone bot lane maybe, or just recalled, but he wanted the, the Nautilus face check, not able to kill him fast enough, and Ming buying time for Xiaohu to get in there. Actually nicely done by Chitan as well, like, dodging the last wild card, like, giving him enough time for the stasis to wear off and get the kill, obviously they give Xiaohu time to walk forward and kill you anyway, so it was always going to be a trade, but a dragon fight has started. Third dragon available here for RNG. Jojo again in trouble. He's going to go down to Gala. And now Gala's going to keep on going. Bing with the wraparound, but KI over the top. And that's two kills for Wade. The dragon is one of them. Gala going to pick up yet another kill. It's a double. It's a triple. Is it a quadra? Is it a penta? Gala's going to get it again. The penta kill for Gala. Gala gets his first second penta kill of the tournament. No, his second first one. I messed it up. Oh, no. His second first penta kill go of back, MSI. Go back. Recon marks these call. We got to go back. Replay it again. I'll get it right. The third one. Oh, Gala popping off on the Kaisa. One of the signature picks for him here. Absolutely crazy team fight there. Most importantly, Ming dying again as well. <laughs> the one kill going in their favor. The dragon snatched up as well to get them onto their sole point. RNG over 10,000 gold in the lead. Steam rolling to their second win of the tournament. Everything we wanted. Gala pens the kill. More Nautilus deaths. It's just all coming together. So watch this one again, Mark. Yeah, here we go. So a couple things to look out for. This is like a good setup for Red. Like this is actually a good team fight. It's just wallet dip at this point because they just get absolutely slammed from here. Nice kick by Wei actually getting that knock up just right as the, the VA goal was coming through. All that was super clean. Chitan was sniping from a pretty good position, but it was like an 8K gold deficit going into that fight. It was it was something that would have been very difficult to win to begin with. Um, yes. and, and Red, I actually think, executed well, just from a little bit too far behind. Yeah. Nice fight there for RNG. Even get the dragon in the middle of it all. Wait, did pick it up. I thought it was a kill. It was just the Drake. But uh, RNG collects the full five plus the additional. Getting the bonus there. They'll be on soul point. Shao, who's going to set up that? Did a very aggressive TP. Aegis cannot hide from Twisted Fate ult. The Everfrost lands. Ming wants in there. That might be a little bit ambitious. And the Nautilus Death may keep racking up as Gala going to be the target. But oh my goodness, man. He's legendary. He's going back through. He's going to get a double. Is it back to back Pentas? No way. He's going to shut that off. But he's going to nab a triple for his trouble. Yeah, going go nowhere nearby. But Bing says, don't worry. Bin will get the last one for you. Gets the ace for the team in front of the inhibitor with the dancing Shelly. Ooh, we might be in for a treat. Looking good so far. RNG trying to speed run their games yet again. They may have reset the times, Mark. But RNG still full steam ahead. Jojo, level 7 Leona is just going to get bullied here. And Shelly is going to get the final charge. Au revoir. No, oh, it's up. We made it. The Rift Herald and all five members of RNG are going to make it to see the Nexus fall. RNG, a 20-minute stomp. Shelly posing for the camera there. The sixth member of RNG coming up clutch, helping them close that game out. RNG moving up to technically 2-0, but five straight wins. They're EXO. They just haven't lost yet. Yeah, they're looking really good. Very scary, I think, for Red. Tried their best. Uh, a different look a little bit for them. Just trying to find some leads in, in the top lane. Did not quite work out, but RNG Continuing snowball, looking like favorites. The debate will continue heading into Rumble stage, assuming they make it there. T1 or them, who should be the favorites? G2 also making a little bit of noise in Group C. Oh, quite a lot of noise, I have to think. Obviously, we'll see them tomorrow, mm -hmm. see if they end up, and see if they can also continue their undefeated run. A couple teams are vying for a clean group stage here, which would be very impressive. I think for me, though, especially looking at what time that game ended, I don't think you would have thought the early game went the way it did. That was very respectful for RNG, very controlled. Yeah, I think this is kind of going back to what we were talking about a little bit, which was it's the 10 to 20 minute mark yeah. that is like the massive the gap in, 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 in team coordination. It, it's not really the first 10 where, you know, they're going back and forth. Yes, it's like a 1,000 gold lead, some laning a little bit in their favor, but then 
tw 10 to 20, they really know how to blow games open and, and put people in the grave. <laughs> that happened very quickly. <laughs> yeah, and you know, uh, Shahu did a great job of just kind of controlling whatever lane needed control. Gala and Ming continue to, to beat people up in 2v2s, and then as soon as the team fight starts, Gala gets a Panther and the game's over. Yeah, normally this is the point where I would say something about tiebreakers. I have no idea because <laughs> RNG has not played the right amount of games, so hopefully the analyst desk can fill us in with that one. Someone else can find out. But before we go to break, we have a question in the latest episode of the Rift Reaction Podcast. What MSI group are you most excited about? Group A, Group B, or Group C? Head over to the episode on Spotify to share your thoughts. Red Bull gives you wings. 